Let's integrate x squared over 1 minus x squared raised to 3 halves dx. So this is an interesting looking integral, and this is one I would solve using trig substitution. Because in my denominator, I have, well, before I get into it, I know that if I have something that looks like a squared minus x or a squared plus x, I would use trig substitution, where here x would be equal to a tan theta, and then in this case, x would be equal to a sine theta. And I don't know if you could immediately tell, but we have that here in my denominator. If I, had re if I could just rewrite this as 1 minus x squared under the square root raised to the power of 3. So same thing, just raised to the power of 3. So I know for sure I could apply trick substitution, specifically sine substitution. So my x is going to be defined as sine theta. And my a in this case is equal to 1, because if, if we're looking at this as the form of a squared minus x squared, the square root of 1 is just 1, so don't need to worry about anything being multiplied by that sign. And then dx would be equal to cosine theta d theta cosine theta d theta. And now I could go ahead and substitute everything into my integral. So x squared, this is sine, immediately I could just write this as sine squared theta over what, actually I think I'd want to write it in this form better because I think it clarifies things. It doesn't really make a difference. 1 square root 1 minus sine squared theta all raised to the power of 3, and then don't forget that dx is cosine theta d theta. Now that I have everything substituted, I can start by trying to simplify things. And the very important thing that we want to simplify here is why I started this substitution in the first place, that whatever's under that square root. So I'm going to be using the Pythagorean identity again. This is really important. I think the key with these trick substitution integrals is knowing these Pythagorean identities and how to use them. So this identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And to write this the same way as what I have in my under my square root, sine squared theta minus 1 is equal to cosine squared theta. So now I know what exactly to replace under that square root. So rewriting this sine squared theta, I'm going to go ahead and pull this cosine up here too while I'm at it, so cosine theta, over the square root of cosine squared theta to the power of 3 d theta. And now I could see that that square and the square root will cancel with each other, and so I'm going to be left with square root of sine, sorry, integral of sine squared theta cosine theta over cosine cubed theta d theta. And now I could go ahead and simplify this even more because I see that my cosine on top will cancel out with one of my cosines in the denominator so that my integral is now even more simplified so that it's sine squared theta over cosine squared theta d theta. This should ring a bell. This is equal to the integral of tangent squared theta d theta. And now I'm going to be using another trig identity, which is that tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. And this is something that you could derive from this function, this identity, sorry. So rewriting this, it's going to be equal to the integral of secant squared theta minus 1 d theta. Now this is very easy to integrate because I know that secant squared theta is the derivative of tangent. So integrating that, I get that. I get tangent theta minus theta plus an arbitrary constant c. This is perfect. Now I have everything integrated, but I'm not done. Because this is a substitution, and I originally started with a variable x, so I need to be consistent with that. I need to go back and substitute everything and rewrite this in terms of x. So to rewrite this in terms of x, I need to go back to my original definition here, my substitution. 
I said that x is equal to sine theta, that means that just doing the inverse, theta must be equal to arc sine x. Now to find my tan theta, this just requires a tiny bit more work and using the definition that sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So knowing this, oops, knowing this, I create a triangle and obtain what my tan theta is equal to. So creating a triangle, I have my angle theta here, and I know that does not look <laughs> like theta, theta here. And now I know that my sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to x, so this is kind of like x over 1. So my opposite would be equal to x, and my hypotenuse would be equal to 1. So that finding that missing side, I get that it's 1 minus x squared. This is just using Pyth Pythagorean rule. So, a Pythagorean formula. So I know that my, that tangent theta must be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. This is just basic trig. And I know that my opposite side is x and my adjacent side is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now I have all my pieces. All I have to do is put everything together. So tan theta, as I just found, is equal to x over square root of 1 minus x squared. And my theta is equal to arc sine x. All plus my arbitrary constant c, because this is an indefinite integral. And that's it.